Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Kloman, the digital tech lead for the digital workplace partners here at AWS. This session is build an AppStream 2.0 environment to stream desktop apps. What we'll cover and build out. So a brief Amazon 2.0 service overview. Uh, we'll then go into a lab environment where we'll do a bit of an intro, deploy the stack, and then see what the end user's experience is. After that, we'll come back, do a little bit of a wrap up, and go from there. So what is Amazon AppStream 2.0? With this, you're able to have apps and data co-located in AWS, and only encrypted pixels are streamed to, uh, across the wire. Users experience a high quality, low latency visualization experience, where users uh, are uh, mapped one-to-one -one individually to a, a compute resource, a instance or a virtual machine. They never share that machine with any other users, so they're never affected by the performance of others within the environment. Users can access this environment using either an HTML5 browser or a Windows client. Let's look at what the stack looks like. Let's break down that stack to see exactly what AWS is providing and the customer needs to, to be worried about. AppStream does all the heavy lifting, as you can see on the left-hand side. Setting up the stream, streaming hosts, delivering a high-performance streaming connection to the browser. Customers don't need to set up or manage the control plane here at all. They really just have to focus on managing their applications through an image management process and their users' identities and policies through a directory service uh, or policy configuration. Customers get to focus on their applications and business requirements. AWS provides the undifferentiated heavy lifting as we tell throughout most, of our, most all of our services. So what does the administrator workflow look like for setting up AppStream 2.0? First, there's an image builder process. And inside that process, a administrator goes and installs, configures those business applications. There's an image assistance where that's used to uh, define and optimize the applications presented, uh, configure default um, uh, user settings, and where you actually create the image. From there, you can define a fleet of those images um, used with inside of this environment. And there, you can configure the, the, the image, um, associate that image, the instance type, so compute and memory and so on, networking configuration and scaling configuration. From there, you're able to then provision the stack, again, associate that uh, fleet with then the stack. Configuration inside of that is user storage, access permissions, um, options around that, and some customer branding. In this scenario with user pools, you're then able to take that stack and associate that with the users and then grant them access. So we'll be going through each one of these steps inside the demo. Let's look at uh, the environment from a network flow perspective. Going from the left to the right, you can see that the end users are authenticating using SAML, API, or user pools. This allows for highly flexible, secure access. Users are able to access their instances via the AWS Managed Streaming Gateway, sort of in the center of this diagram. This facilitates the pixel streaming of the desktops to the end users. Once users are able to access the instances within the fleet, the VPC configuration, including security groups, uh, then provides limit, uh, access or limited access uh, to what's, uh, what they're able to access within the customer VPC. These things can be Amazon FSX, um, a service that provides um, native Windows file services, uh, where AWS manages that for our customers and can provide it in a very simple, scalable, easy to use way. AWS directory services, where there's a managed Active Directory and native Microsoft Active Directory environment that again, we do all the management for. So we're talking about backups, uh, uh, scaling policies, um, being able to uh, patch that as need be. Uh, outside of that, really, these instances are able to access any other AWS services or resources that are configured to be accessed within that customer VPC. All right, let's get into the demo. Hi, everyone. We're going to get into a demo of Amazon AppStream 
Um, first, we'll get into a uh, an environment that's provided by Amazon. Um, so the try sample applications at no cost. Check that out. And then later, we'll get our hands dirty with getting started with Amazon AppStream 2.0 and provisioning this with inside of your own AWS account. So first, if you go to aws.amazon.com slash AppStream2, you'll see this page here. Go ahead and click on Try Sample Applications at No Cost. You'll be redirected to this page here. Go ahead and click on the Try Sample Applications at No Cost again. And you'll be redirected into an AppStream 2.0 interface. Here you have a listing of applications that are available to you. Again, this is all at no, uh, no cost and no risk to you, uh, simply provided by Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, LibreOffice Writer. It's launching the session now to get that application up and running. And you see that I have uh, that application now provisioned to me. Uh, go ahead and play with this environment. Uh, there's lots of different options. Uh, if you click on the left-hand side here, you can list uh, launch other applications uh, that are listed here. Uh, lots of features and capabilities. Um, have fun with that. Play around with it. And from that, um, I'm going to go ahead and get our hands a little dirty with getting an AppStream 2.0 environment actually up and running. So how I like getting AppStream up and running, and really AWS accounts in general, is via Amazon or AWS uh, Quick Starts. An AWS Quick Start is a reference architecture with a kind of one-click to deploy functionality that automation is via AWS CloudFormation templates. So one that I like to use a lot and really kind of gets us up and running uh, pretty quickly is the Remote Desktop Gateway. Um, if you want to get Active Directory involved in this, then there's another one for that. Um, so either way, um, I'm going to go choose for this environment, the remote desktop gateway. What that looks like and what this does for you is build out the VPC within your AWS account within a selected region. It also uh, deploys out uh, public and private subnets, um, the, the, the whole thing that you'd need to get really an account up and running. One of the things it also does is put a kind of bastion host or remote desktop gateway instance within the environment so you can get into the environment jump in from, say, the internet. As shown here, I, on the right, uh, your workload not included. That's where we'll get Amazon AppStream 2.0 configured after this deploys. So in this quick start, essentially, we go here, scroll down to how to deploy, deploy RD gateway into your uh, new VPC. So it'll create that for you. Jump that over into the configuration here, the stack details. Uh, pop in the necessary information here and click Next. Review anything that you'd like to in this screen. Click Next there. Do you have to review the configuration? Scroll to the bottom. Acknowledge these items here and create stack. So this will take a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and talk with you in a second. And just like that, the CloudFormation template is complete. So you'll see the create complete status on the stacks page here. Um, we can go over to um, the VPC just to show off what it did there in the services page. You'll see within the region that you've configured a, a new VPC right there. Cool. So let's go in uh, to Amazon AppStream and get started. So you'll find Amazon AppStream in the Services tab. Scroll over on the right-hand side here. Right-click and open a new tab there. And the Amazon AppStream 2.0 console. So um, if you haven't used Amazon AppStream before, uh, you'll see this page. When you click the Get Started button here, as it notes right here, that uh, identity access management roles will be created within your account to manage the AppStream resources. So we're going to go ahead and go click Started there. Next, you'll see this screen, Quick Links. We're going to go ahead and use this wizard here to set up with sample applications. So go ahead and click this button. And then here, we're going to go through each one of the steps to create the stack. 
You can name this whatever you'd like. I'm just going to use the defaults here, pop a display name in, go ahead and click next on that first step. Because we chose to use the sample applications, this one image is available. Creating stacks uh, outside of this wizard, you'll have lots of different options around what type of image, uh, public, private, shared, different operating system options, and instance families as well. But for the sample applications, we're going to go ahead and, and use this one here. So click Next on step two. Lots of different options for the fleet configuration, the different instance family sizes. Again, this is limited with this wizard, but I'm going to go ahead and choose the default there. The on demand or always on options for the fleet type. In this environment, I'm going to just use on demand. I'm not going to be keeping this always on. Definitely check out the differences between the two here and the pricing between them. It depends on your use case on which one would work best for you. User details. Again, I'm going to keep the defaults on this. This is meant to really kind of get you going pretty quick here, but feel free to play around with any of these that you'd like. Go ahead and click next on the third step and to the fourth configure network. So this first option here is if you haven't configured a gateway, a NAT gateway in your environment, and you want to be able to have the instances in a public subnet to be able to get out to the internet uh, easily, you can have that option available. Because we use the AWS Quick Start, I'm going to uncheck this option so that the instances can be in a private subnet. I'm going to switch off the default VPC to the one that we created in the Quick Start, and then choose one of the subnets. So if you hover over this a little bit, you'll see that there's display more information there. There's private, there's a public, we got another private and another public. So in this environment, I'm going to use the private subnets. So that's in US East 1A, so how that's configured in my environment. And then for the second one, I'm also going to use the private one as well. There is in US East 1B. So private subnets is how I have this configured. For now, I'm going to use the default security group. It is recommended to create your own and limit down your security groups for these instances for your exact use case. Make sure that there's no conflicting issues within your environment and the security of your environment. I'm going to go ahead and click next to get to step five. So here it's enabling storage options. Home folders is set up by default using S3 buckets. I'm going to go ahead and leave that default setting configured. If you have Google Drive for G Suite or OneDrive for Business, you can enable those as well. But again, I'm going to use the defaults. Click Next. Some user settings with being able to limit what you're able to do within the clipboard, file transfer options, and printing options. Again, I'm going to use the defaults here, but feel free to customize that to your liking. I'm also going to allow for application setting persistence. This is always handy if you have a application, maybe like a web browser, where you want to keep some information about that user's session persistent. So I'm again use the defaults, click on the review button, go through each one of the settings listed out nicely here, and then click create. I'm going to acknowledge the cost behind this uh, and how this is being charged for. So acknowledge that I've read the pricing details and I want to continue. Click create. From here, we'll get redirected over to the stacks page. You can see that it says active here. We're going to go to the fleets. And we'll see that the fleet that we just created is in the starting status. So that'll keep, take a couple of minutes to get going. Um, but before we switch videos here, I want to go over to the user pool and create ourselves a user. So this uh, makes it very handy to get users into the AppStream environment. All you need is their email address which I will pop in here. 
I'm actually going to use a bit of a custom one here. Pop in my name and create user. Now what this will do is send me an email with my user account and a way to get into the environment. So a link to the login and a password. So once I get that and the fleet comes online, then I'll come back to this video. So see you in a second. Okay, so when you get the email and when your fleet has turned into the running status, as you can see here in the fleets area, we then want to associate the user with the stack. So I'll go ahead and click on my user account there, click on actions, assign stack. You can see here that the example stack is listed that we created earlier. And we'll go ahead and have that email sent as well. So go ahead and click assign stack. Next, we wanna go over to the email that was sent. As you can see here, we have a login page, my email address, and a temporary password. Go ahead and copy up the temporary password. Click on the login page link. Put in your email address that you used, which is this here for me, and I'll paste in the password. Go ahead and click login. You'll be prompted to create a new password. So I'll pop that in here and set password. Now I have access to the sample applications uh, within my own environment. I'm going to go ahead and click on Firefox here. And you'll see that the session is starting to be prepared. I'll fast forward the video just to save some time. All right, after a minute or so, you'll see that the application has launched. Let's go ahead and interact with the Fire, Firefox browser. Let's go to, uh, let's say, Amazon AppStream website. There we go. All right, so if we wanna interact with other applications in the image, we go to the left-hand side here, and we can look at the different applications. Let's go ahead and open up Writer. There we go. Awesome. This button, we can click and scroll between the two different applications we have open. So there's that feature there. This button here gets you to the My Files, which we configured during the configuration. You can go into the Home folders, you can create new folders, uh, upload files so that the applications have access to those to that data. There's clipboard options here. So I'm going to paste to remote session here. And let's go ahead and throw in something there. And then I'll be able to paste that there. So amazon.com. There we go. Clipboard. We can enable the microphone, different streaming modes, screen resolutions, uh, regional settings, all in here. There's an option for full screen. And if you have multiple monitors, you can toggle between them here. Once you're done with the application, you can go ahead and click over to your name, your email address, and click log out. All right, that's been a getting started demo of Amazon AppStream 2.0. To get started, check out the sites listed here uh, where you're able to try the AppStream demo experience, follow the getting started guide, or even the guides for these desktop application vendors. If you need additional help setting up the environment, Engage a partner. We launched the Digital Workplace Competency for Consulting Partners, where you can see a listing of partners and their consulting offerings to either get started, deploy the environment, or even manage your AppStream 2.0 environment for you. I hope you enjoyed this session. Again, I'm Andrew Kloman, the Global Tech Lead of the Digital Workplace Partners here at AWS. Thanks.